I'm Brenda Child, and I'm a professor of history in the departments of American Studies and American Indian Studies. American Indian Studies is a discipline that really came out of the Civil Rights Movement, like other ethnic studies programs in the United States. The feeling was that universities were very Eurocentric in their course offerings. So it really came out of a political moment, like women's studies, African-American studies, Chicano studies. And I think the ethnic studies programs and American Indian studies were several decades ahead of many other traditional disciplines because of their focus on, you know, not worrying so much about a particular disciplinary approach, but bringing all forms of knowledge together. I have taught a number of courses in American Indian Studies. I specialize in the history of Native people here in the Great Lakes, and so I often teach a class called Lands and Homelands in the Great Lakes to sort of emphasize that Minnesota and the broader Great Lakes region is a homeland to Ojibwe and Dakota, Ho-Chunk, and other tribal peoples. I teach a class also on the history of American Indian education. A lot of people, I find, don't know that during the late 19th and early 20th century that it was policy of the federal government in the United States to remove Indian children from their homes and families and communities. And the idea uh, at the time was that Native people, if they're going to survive and assimilate into American culture and eventually become citizens of the United States, need to do so as Americans. They have to abandon their cultures, languages, traditions, their religions, and so that course is a really key one for me. I think my generation was very focused on history, and I became a historian with the idea that American Indians have been left out of the narrative of American history, and that was very important for us. But students right now, I often call them the language generation. We are known for are excellent Ojibwe and Dakota language classes, which are um, the heritage languages of Minnesota. Those are the native languages to this place. Our Dakota language instructor, Neil McKay, likes to say, if you want to study Swedish, you can go to Sweden, but if you want to learn Dakota, you have to come to the University of Minnesota. And there are very few speakers of that language right now. As elders pass away, fewer and fewer speakers every day. And so our students, I think, are doing something really important to kind of save their language. The Department of American Indian Studies has always been an ethnically diverse department in terms of our undergraduates. The majority of students in our Ojibwe and Dakota language classes are non-Indians. And so some people just choose to study Ojibwe or Dakota to fulfill their language requirement in the College of Liberal Arts. We think that's a terrific thing because everyone who lives in the United States, and especially people who go to school at the University of Minnesota, should know about the Indian heritage, cultures, and political circumstances of Native people. 